Hi, welcome to Biography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. This episode is going to be the second installment of my lettering texture series. Like the first one, this is not about creating different font styles, and I've already mentioned the different ways in that video you can get them. Instead, this video I will show you five more ways to give your letters different looks via texture. So let's get to work. Our first texture is ribbed. If you are using a stencil, then close the gaps by drawing lines with a pencil. Then use a writer pen tip to burn around the edges of the letter. Then rub over the letter with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. Next, use a straight edge to draw horizontal lines across the letter. Obviously, I didn't make sure my lines were evenly spaced apart from each other. It is up to you on whether or not you want your lines evenly spaced apart. Burn short, pull-away strokes along the top of the letter. Start the stroke on the line and pull it down towards the next horizontal line. Stop near the halfway mark. With the next horizontal line, use the razor edge of the shader to burn in the line. Then burn short pull-away strokes along this line. Again, start the stroke on the line and pull it down towards the next line, stopping the stroke at the halfway mark. Reburning over the strokes will result in a smoother looking burn area. Continue to work your way down the letter. Burn in each horizontal pencil line. Then burn short pull-away strokes that start on that line and get pulled down towards the next line. Stop the stroke near the halfway mark. Rotate the board, or paper in my case, and repeat the process of burning short pull-away strokes along the horizontal lines. Pull-away strokes start much darker than they end, so this means that the horizontal lines are dark, but the halfway mark between the lines is pale. The combination of dark lines that get gradually paler towards the center is what creates the illusion of rounded ribs. Our second texture is stenciled. Again, use a pencil to draw lines to close the gaps if using a stencil. Then burn around the edges of the letter using a writer pen tip. Make sure to rub an eraser over the letter when you're done to remove any residual graphite. Next, use a stencil of your choice to trace a design onto the letter. I am using a piece of rubber or vinyl lace edging or lace border. I have no idea when or where I got it as I used it years ago in an airbrush project. Keep in mind that you can use anything for your stencils like paper doilies or store-bought stencils. There are quite a number of very ornate mandala styled stencils available. Depending on your stencil, you might need to touch up the design with a pencil afterwards. I didn't press the record button, but this is an easy step. Use a writer pen tip to burn in the stencil design on the letter. Then rub over the letter with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. Next, use a shader pen tip to burn in the top portion of the letter to a fairly uniform color. How dark you burn it is up to you. To darken, just reburn over the area until the desired darkness level is achieved. Lastly, use a writer pen tip to reburn along the edges of the letter where the stencil design is located to further define and darken those edges. Now we will create dark mottling. 
Do the same starting step of closing the gaps if using a stencil and burn the letter outline with a writer pen tip. Then erase over the letter to remove any extra graphite. Begin by filling in the letter using circular motion. Circular motion is nothing more than moving your hand in small circles. This motion creates a lot of overlap areas that tend to be a bit darker than the non-overlap areas and it forms a random texture. To bring out this texture, vary the size of the circles and change where you start burning them. Also, vary how fast or slow you move your hand. Doing all three of these things will really emphasize the random texture that can be created with circular motion. Now we are going to bump up the contrast by burning another layer of circular motion on the letter. This time, make sure to leave some Pell areas from the first burn untouched. As I burn, I'm working my way around the letter but I'm not covering the entire letter with a new layer of circular motion. Notice though that I am covering the majority of the letter, but I make sure to leave some pale spots here and there completely unburned with a new layer of circular motion. To finish the letter, we will add one last layer of circular motion, but this time, only burn on small, random areas to make them dark brown to black in color. Again, make sure to leave those pale spots completely alone from the first layer. This composite photo shows how the letter looked after each layer of circular motion was burned. Now we will create the crackers texture. Use a pencil to close the gaps and then burn the outline of the letter with a writer pen tip. Then use a straight edge to draw horizontal lines across the letter. Again, it is your choice if you want to keep the lines a uniform distance from each other. Then draw vertical lines down the letters, creating small grids on each letter. Use an embossing tool and press it firmly into the surface of the board at the spot where two lines intersect. This will create a deeply embossed dot. I am using an embossing tool for paper crafting to create the dots. The end of the embossing tool has a small rounded knob on it. Here's how the letters looked after the dots were embossed and the pencil lines erased. Now use the flat of a shader to burn over the letter and reveal the texture. Try to keep the color uniform or mostly uniform. I think I was hungry when I named this texture because it reminded me of saltine crackers. And I would have to admit it still does. To darken the letters, just reburn over them. The darker the letter, the better the embossed dots will show up. Our last texture is dotted. Once again, draw in the gaps and burn around the edges of the letter with a writer pen tip. Then, use a shader to fill the letter with a fairly uniform tan color. Don't get the letter too dark in color as you want the dots to show up easily. Switch to a large ball pen tip to burn lines or rows of dots. You can burn the lines so that they create curves, swirls, or even rectangular designs. If you do not have a ball pen tip, use your writer pen tip. I like to start the burn with the first line done in the design of choice. Then I fill the rest of the letter with lines or rows of dots that follow the contours of that first line. That's it. We are all done.
I hope you like the second installment on my textures. If there is a texture that you would like to see in a future installment, let me know. Leave a comment and I'll try to incorporate it into a future video. In the description below, I provided a link to my website, Pyography Made Easy. The website has the written tutorial for this episode. The website also has numerous other written tutorials and free patterns, so go check it out. Well, thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.